Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number 282. So the good news is that we didn't F it up. I don't think we f it up on our call last week. Um, so for those of you who missed last week's vlog, go watch that vlog and then pick it up here. All right, I need you to stop here. Go watch that because what I'm about to tell you is going to make more sense. Okay. All right, they're gone. Okay. So the company that we pitched was Target. Um, and uh, a lot of you guys probably knew that it was either like Ta Target or Walmart or one of these other big, um, big, big stores. And it was really cool. We had literally like 30 minutes. I think the whole call was 30 minutes. I think we were supposed to have less time. And the thing that really sucked was we start and Kelly was the one that was kind of doing like the pitching and all of a sudden he like loses connection. So here we are like me, Rob and the other two guys from Target were like, uh, uh oh, this is this is this is how T. Shanley is going down, huh? Kelly came back, we regrouped and and did a great presentation. I really feel like we did a good presentation. Um, a few things. Now here's the thing. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot that goes in there. So so I can't tell you everything, but there are certain things that I think they liked about T. Shanley. Um, one of the things is that we have a system. All right, like I mentioned in the last vlog. You know, we have to change and retool all of our, our packaging for retail so that it looks better, more appealing, more, you know, more super sexy so that somebody, when they are looking for skincare or cruising down that aisle, boom, it stops them dead in their tracks and they're like, yo, what is this like system with all the things I need? And so the fact that we have, have systems is, I think, in our favor. The other reason why it's good as a, as a company to sell systems from, from their perspective is that they're not just coming in and being like, hey, uh, I need a moisturizer, and they grab a moisturizer. And you're, you're, you're leaning on the, the consumer to know that they need a moisturizer, a wash, a scrub, and all these different components, where we sort of put everything together, as you know, boom, there it is. And that was really, if I'm being honest, that is one of the things that, and the reasons why we started T. Shanley, it was to to do things different. We realized that there was an opportunity because, you know, guys don't know intuitively what products they need, how to use it, and the fact that we've got the card and it would be like on the box to show like directions, I think that is one of the things that we are, we have a competitive advantage over that. Now, this doesn't mean that they had, they didn't have other companies that were pitching them, uh, them systems. The, the whole process works pretty crazy, right? Two weeks, there's a two week period where Target was like vetting all these different, you know, companies and hearing their pitches. And then they said to us, you know, okay, we'll, we'll let you know in uh, three to four weeks. We'll let you know if you're moving on to kind of like the next round. Um, the other reason that I feel like we have a slight, not a slight, where we really dominate in terms of a competitive advantage is the ability to drive a message and to educate the consumer or the masses as to the fact that you can actually go to Target and, and buy these products. Because you know at the end of the day, what they're really focused on, yes, they want your products to be great and all that good stuff, but they want it to sell. They want to move SKUs on the shelves, right? That's what their model is. And so one of the, 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 the slides that we sort of added like last minute, 12th hour, was all about our influencers and our strategy and the people that we use in order to promote and talk about T. Shanley. And we've got a ton of them, right? A ton of incredible guys. And so we really sort of highlighted some of the people that are talking about T. Shanley, you know, collectively, how many subscribers, how many views they've had this past month, and really highlighted the fact that if we are partnering with you, we will embark on a campaign to educate the consumers that you can go into Target and grab this. And so this is something where we, we do that really well. That's one of the things that T. Shanley does incredibly well. And one of our secrets, one of our, not secret, but that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful is the use of social media, more specifically YouTube. And so the fact that we can sort of like blast out, hey, go to Target and, and check out T. Shanley and do some type of campaign like that, I think that is definitely going to be appealing to Target. And it also helps us I think set ourselves apart from other brands and other companies. But at this point, all we can do is kind of wait. We will keep you updated on if we hear anything or when we hear something, what the sort of either A, the next steps are, or B, the fact that they passed on us. And, and both are an option. If they say yes, 
then that brings a, a, a new like level of complexity and things that we got to talk about and, and depending on the size of like a purchase order and that kind of stuff, it's going to add a little bit of complexity to our current model. But the truth is we are a really strong team with really great people and we are poised and positioned to kick ass in retail. And now, gentlemen, what I'd like to do is get to some of your incredible business questions because there were a ton of business questions that were awesome. And um, guys, remember, if you've got a business question down below, start it with business question and ask your question. Each week, I try to dive in and, and answer a few of them. Some weeks, I do better than others, depending on if I am monopolizing with this big mouth. The first business question comes from our friend Noah Lepow... <laughs> Let me try this again. Noah Lepowitz. Lupowitz? <laughs> I shouldn't, it shouldn't be that hard. Apparently it's been a long day. He says, are you planning on taking Pete and Pedro or Enemy to retail too? Are you planning on selling T. Hanley as a pro box or individual products in the store? Love your products. Um, Pete and Pedro, no. Enemy, no. Products, individual. Some products, individual. We are planning on selling the systems. And, it, and it, here's the other thing. It really boils down to what they are interested in in carrying and what skews. We basically threw everything out them that we could do, including some some exciting products that we've got that that yeah, anyway. <laughs> it could be a mix of systems and individual products. So if somebody did just want to buy like an eye cream or a serum or a wash or whatever it is, we would have retail sizes available for people if they wanted that. It all it all honestly boils down to to target and what they're looking for, but great question and thank you. The next business question comes from our friend Chris Pina. He says, hey Aaron, what's your opinion on opening a business that's quite similar to others in your location? Meaning you'll have to compete or uh, you'll, you will have to, you'll have competition on winning your clients. Yes. What is my opinion on this? I think it's okay. It depends though. It really depends on on your business. It depends on what your competition is and sort of what industry. Give you some examples. There was a, <laughs> this is a stupid example, but okay. So by me, there is this, this, this donut shop that's been around Marietta for years. Everybody loves this, this donut shop and it's, it's, it's independently owned and operated. So one day, all of a sudden there was new construction next to this donut shop, literally in the next like parking, like right next to it. Guess what it was? Can you guess? It was a Dunkin' Donuts. How do you think this played out? Any ideas, any guesses? I'll tell you, Dunkin' Donuts shut down because people said, uh-uh, I'm not going to Dunkin'. They, they were supporting the local business that had been there for years. And you would think Dunkin' Donuts, the dummies, would be like, yo, okay, we, we might, need to, might need to look for another location. Maybe it's not a great idea to be exactly next to the, 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 the business. But that was a story that I love so much because it really showed you know, sort of like the underdog winning in a scenario and situation like that. And so I thought that was really cool. But here's another scenario that is not so cool. And that is like fitness centers, right? Back in the day, long time ago, fitness centers were, you know, not that common, like big fitness centers, like LA Fitnesses or Bally's. I don't even know if Bally's are around anymore, or Crunch Fitness. Anyway, and so, so opening, you know, an addition like a personal training studio or something small, you know, kind of within a proximity that is, that is, you know, kind of close, but not like super far away or, or super like right next to each other or in the same shopping center was a decent idea. And the reason is because there was a market for smaller boutique, like 24 hour type places to open. And you knew that if an LA fitness or some big competition or box retailer was going into a location, you know that they kind of already did the math, right? They know what the, what the amount of, you know, mean or the, the medium income mean income is, how many people are there, how many people are on that road. So to some degree, it's almost not a bad idea to be a smaller guy going into kind of like following some of these bigger box retail stores. Um, but you know, there are other stories where, where it's not a good idea. Like a lot of businesses like Ace Hardware, you know, with Home Depot, it really boils down to your specific business. And if it's, if it's going to, if there's a differentiator basically like, so, so the salon, right? Open salon Posta, it's on Marietta square. Well, guess what? There's a barbershop on the square, two barbershops on the square and another salon within like a few hundred yard radius. But 
The difference is that we took it up another level in terms of our stylus, our higher caliber, our, our building is nicer. We are a more luxurious experience. And so what's happened? And we've been absolutely crushing it. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, if you've got something that's a little bit different than some of your competition, yes. If you are identical, it's gonna be more challenging. Um, another, another crazy thing, here, I'm, I'm going all over the place today. So something else interesting about Atlanta is chiropractors, right? So you've all heard of chiropractors, right? Well, there's a college here, one of the most popular chiropractic colleges called Life University. Life University is like one of the big, you know, colleges for people to come and, and learn to be a chiropractor. When I started actually doing research, I, I knew this guy a long time ago, back like with the nutrition store. We were thinking about opening some type of like health mall where you've got, you know, the workout, you've got the supplement, you've got chiropractic, you've got acupuncture. Like that was an idea that he and I sort of started. started I mean, this was back in like 2008, no, 98, I'm sorry, 1998, 99, 2000. So long, long, long time ago. We started looking to see how many chiropractors are in the metro area. There are literally more chiropractors in the metro area, condensed, right, than the entire rest of the country. Now you're like, yo, it's because they're students. No, it's not. It's actively practicing chiropractors in their own office. What happens, people move here for school and love it so much, they decide to, to, to stay. When all they would have to do is move to some other place that doesn't have 10,000 chiropractors within a five mile radius, and they would absolutely dominate and kill it. And so you really need to be smart, you know, and, and really think through what is the value prop that you bring to the table versus somebody else. But incredible question. I hope this rambling answer gave some insight or some business lesson somehow, some way, but probably not. There are two more questions that we're gonna get to today. One is from Gary Hernandez, which is an amazing question I'm gonna end with. And the next question is from a man, his Jeep, and his thoughts. I think I have a sneaking suspicion who this gentleman is. Anyway, here's the deal. The question is, so we all know that marketing is what drives business and social media marketing is key now. How many times a day or week do you recommend posting? Do you recommend cross-promoting the same things on different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or all different content each uh, on each? Um, also, do you recommend keeping personal Facebook, Instagram separate from business or also post business things on your personal page also? So here is the deal. What I would recommend is, yes, you should be posting. Now, it all on, on the different social media platforms. What I'd recommend is because you're new, because you're starting, focus on one piece of content and then disperse it on all of the platforms instead of trying to be like, you know, this piece of content for TikTok, this piece on the, it's, it's all about utilization. You know, you've got limited time, you've got limited resources and, um, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta focus a little bit, Joey, come on now. But here's the deal. The good news is that there are different apps and things that can actually help you. If you upload it, you don't actually have to be the person like every day sitting there and like timing everything. You can actually set a schedule and it will disperse your content on different platforms. In terms of how often, it really depends. I think probably when you're starting, you should be testing a lot. You don't need to be perfect, but you need to be testing stuff. See what hits, see what resonates on the different platforms. And so what I'd recommend probably is, if you could do daily, I think that would be good, honestly. I think if you could post daily, that would be good because you gotta get into the habit and work that, that content generating muscle and so if you've got that sort of in your mind, or maybe it's every other day, if, if every day is too much, but you need to be on a consistent basis. You need to also not, not bite off more than you can chew and say, okay, I'm gonna post every single day. And you do that for like a week and you're like, damn, I'm out of content and I'm tired. And then you don't pay, post for another week. I would rather see you guys slow down and post methodically as long as the schedule is something that you can maintain. Um, what other question was there? Uh, oh, in terms of, of keeping business personal separate, for me, it was my personal is here, my business is here, because the message and things that I, I talk about is different, and I don't wanna bombard all my friends and family with all of my, all of my stuff, and that's for me. But, you know, I know a lot of people that, you know, like just, for instance, multi-level marketing, <laughs> People, they are bombarding their channel with, you know, buy my makeup, buy my knives, buy whatever, buy this course. 
they're using their audience. I think that is, that is not a sustainable model because your audience is not like this like evergreen, ever growing type of scenario. But YouTube, some of these other platforms, you are in front of new people hopefully every single day, so that is growing. They're also engaging with you, which means that they actually like what you have to say and what you're selling, and so it makes more sense. It's not a bad idea to tell your people that you're friends with on your individual personal pages, hey, I'm doing this. If you're interested, come follow me over there. It's the only, I mean, I think everybody does that, but it's a great way to start to generate a little bit of traffic, awareness, and if they're interested in what you're saying, then they'll see it over there. But for me, it's about keeping personal personal and, and business business. Sometimes I will, I will share things that are happening with me um, on my personal pages just to sort of be like, hey, this is happening, but not all the time because my friends don't, know. My friends don't care that much about what I'm doing, which brings me to the final question from Gary Hernandez, self-defense and urban survival. What's up? Wait, 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 where's my knife? Oh. <laughs> Coolest knife ever, right? You're like, yo, is that a switchblade? I don't know how they get around it, but I got this from like a survival store. I was looking for a new knife and, um, and it's like, it was just kind of cool. Now the, the thing about, ready, ready, like it's not, it's not like super strong, all you gotta do, right? Anyway, <laughs> it's, cool to, it's cool to play with. It's like a good like fidget thing. Anyway, why, why am I talking about this, Gary? You use these, not this. The business question, <laughs> I've had a little caffeine today. The business question is, Aaron, my question is, when you started, did any of your friends or family that did not believe in you or support you back then and have they stayed in touch? And now that you're doing, very, or you're doing well or successful in your life, have any of them tried to come back into your life and how did you handle it? So this is such an interesting question, right? Because you think about that stuff, right? You think about you know, who are your true friends? Now in terms of people that I was friends with that didn't believe in me, I don't know, they're not my friends right now. You know, I, I surround myself with people that I, that I trust and I love. And when I identify that there's somebody in my life that I don't think has the same respect for me as I do them or doesn't treat me in the manner or the fashion that I, that I deserve to be, in my opinion, treated, then I don't spend any time with them. You know, so, so everybody that's around me now, that's been around me for years, like I do have some legacy like, like friends that have been with me, <laughs> been with me, you know, forever that have sort of seen sort of the growth. And then a lot of people I've p picked up kind of like along the way. And, you know, there are people, of course, when you become more successful that are going to think that, that, that you can help them or that they want something from you. And these people, it's pretty obvious when they approach you or when they reach out that, you know what, they're just looking for, you know, help, they're looking for money, they're looking for whatever. Um, but you, you definitely need to have your guard up, but not that far up that you don't trust anybody. You know, I have an incredible network of friends and family that I absolutely love and that I spend as much time with as I can. And it's about, you know, really staying, staying true to that and, and staying helping, being around the people that you love. You know, my business partners, my business associates, like all these people. Now, are there people probably that I'm Facebook friends with that, that when I, you know, started posting YouTube videos thought it was stupid? I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of them, right? They didn't, they, I didn't know. I'm sure my wife probably, my wife, be honest, my wife was embarrassed when I would tell people, yeah, I make, make videos or YouTube videos. This was back before YouTube was, was a thing and people understood that you could actually do something from that or it could lead to something. But it was a little bit weird for her. She, I remember conversations that her and I had, like why can't you just be an accountant or get a job or something like that? You know, but she always believed in me. She always has been like, you know, I've always known you were gonna be successful. I just didn't know what that was. There she is now, hang on, hang on a second. Hold on, hang on. Hey, your ears must be burning. Where are you? I'm, I'm filming a vlog. Your ears, were they burning? Because I was just talking about you. Uh, were you saying good things? I was saying all nice things. I was saying, we're, one of the questions on this vlog was, you know, were there people in your life that didn't believe in you back then before you were successful that now have like come back and tried to like, you know, befriend you or whatever. And so I was just talking a little bit about, about you know, this whole like concept of like, you know, people believing in you. And, and then I was talking about you where, you know, at first you didn't understand like YouTube and were embarrassed sometimes when I would talk and tell people, hey, I make videos because it sounded like I made porn because there, YouTube yeah. wasn't really a thing. But you always believed in me, right? Oh yeah, I always believed in you. 
believe in you. I always knew you were the like hardest working person I know. But yeah, at the beginning of the YouTube channel thing, what, 13 years ago? -ish? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, you're going to do what? Like, can't <laughs> you just be an accountant or something normal? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and so here we, are. here we are. Exactly. So thank you for believing in me. Yeah, no problem. I love you. All right. I'll call you later. Bye. Love you too. Bye. So, <laughs> perfect timing. Anyway, um, and so, you know, are there people in my life now that, that I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hang out with all that many people. I am not somebody that, you know, has like this crazy vast, you know, network of like 30 people that I hang out with on a regular basis. I've got a small group of friends that I am incredibly tight with that I would do anything with and that would do anything for me. And it's never been about the money. It's never been about the success or anything like that. It's just about, you know, us being boys and friends and, and, and you know, they're just good people and people that I love. And so I guess surround yourself with that. And, and if you become successful and you feel like there's somebody in your life or comes into your life that does not have pure intentions, you definitely need to keep your wall and your guard up. And so it's up for me, but not that up that I lose sight of the fact that there are a lot of amazing people that, that are out there and that, you know, that are awesome. Gentlemen, speaking of awesome, you are absolutely ma uh, amazing. Anyway, that is a long vlog. This one's probably really long. I just wanted to come on, give you a little bit of an update, tell you a little bit of things, and hopefully you got some value from this. Guys, thank you so much for everything. Next week, I don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but I know it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. And so make sure to tune in. Guys, if you dug this video, drop us one of these. And thank you, as always, for actually Rob and Kelly are coming in a few weeks. That's going to be fun and exciting. Anyway, thank you, and we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Guys, thanks for everything. See you next week.